It's the end of the year, which means it's time to do the many lists, top five lists, top ten lists, whatever the lists are. Uh, so this one I'm doing here is my top five wrestlers of the year of 2022. Now, 2022 has been a better year for wrestling in some aspects. Uh, we've had f crowds for the full year, which is very good after, you know, 2020. Uh, was cut off from crowds in March and then 2021 we only had crowds back for shows in like around May I want to say is when crowds start to come back uh, so this is now our for our first full year of crowds since 2019 which is a good thing um, we've had a bunch of freaking uh, amazing pay-per-views this year we've had a bunch of amazing episodes of TV this year and with that there has come opportunities for many wrestlers to shine and you know to um stand up step up so we're gonna go through the list of my top five wrestlers of the year and then i will explain to you why i think they are my top five wrestlers and all that but before we do that what i'm going to do is i'm going to get my list of my favorite wrestlers my top five wrestlers from last year we're gonna compare that okay so looking at my top five list from last year we have number five was brian danielson which okay made sense he was on there you know he came to aew and immediately just we had the banger match with kenny omega and then the 60 minute draw with hangman adam page so that immediately th those two reasons completely explain and then he was just awesome in the ring uh, he brought back the I have till five and all that. That was that was awesome. Uh, number four was Hangman Adam Page, which you know what made sense again. He had his big three year journey culminate. He became the world champion. He had the classic again with Brian Danielson. So it made sense. We have Miro as number three, which again, I think makes sense because he just had that amazing TNT title run and was just awesome at everything he did. Uh, Roman Reigns was number two. This was his first year. Last year was his first full year as Tribal Chief, Roman Reigns, Universal Champion, all that stuff. I feel like this year might have been a better year overall for Tribal Chief Roman, um, to be honest. And then number one last year was Kenny Omega. Do I need to say why? That man's world title run is one of my favorites. That run was awesome. Every match was great. Uh, all the stories I was invested in, it was just a really solid title run. And the fact that he was doing it with freaking injuries and vertigo makes it even better. But I can say that none of the top fives from last year made it on this year. None of them. None of them are on the top fives this year. Uh, so without further ado, let's get into the top fives. Number five, Will Ospreay. Uh, number five is Will Ospreay. Will has had a hell of a year, hasn't he? He's had many fantastic matches this year. Um, I've really and I've really become more of a fan of his. Will Osprey was a type of wrestler who was like I know of him, and I know I've heard he's very good, but I've never actually stopped to like see. But this year I got more into New Japan, and I quickly was like, "Wow, Will Osprey is fantastic," you know. Um, and then you know him showing up at AEW helped a lot too. And we got to see Will Osprey just shine there. You know, he had uh, the match with Orange Cassidy at Forbidden Door which was a fantastic match um and again not just AEW. his finals match in the g1 climax against okada his match against zack sabre jr was great his match with john moxley was great he was telling the story that he was constantly getting screwed um not to mention the man almost died this year <laughs> and he still came back and fought um you know he's had uh, he's defended the IWGP United States Championship against David Finley, uh, Tatsuya Naito, and then in Rev Pro, he's been doing stuff in Rev Pro too. I hear his matches in Rev Pro were fantastic. So like Will Ospreay, has just had a banger year. 
and this is great. And I was actually somewhat disappointed he didn't win the G1 Climax. I'm like, ah, you could have given it to Will. I mean, I'm not against Okada winning. I'm not against Okada winning anything. <laughs> but I felt like, oh, maybe Will could have won the G1. Just, just to give him a bone for what he's been through. Uh, but yeah, Will Ospreay is my number five. Number four is Sami Zayn. Now, this is the complete opposite of Will Ospreay because Will Ospreay is on here for his in-ring work and his fantastic matches. Sami Zayn is on here for his character and story uh, work because I don't watch WWE a lot. I really don't. I don't watch any of the main roster pay-per-views or any of that. Uh, I've been burnt too much. And people are saying, oh, well, Triple H is back, so it's a lot better. I don't care. I've been burnt too many times. You've slapped me too many times. I'm done. There's only so much I can take. Uh, and really, all the only WWE stuff I watch is I watch NXT. And even then, I don't watch NXT. I, like, fast forward through NXT. And then watch the pay-per-views. Um... But I have heard so many good stuff about Sami Zayn and his bloodline storyline. So I've watched a couple stuff when it's like my dad's like, oh, you should see this. And I sit down and watch. I'm like, oh, that's pretty funny. But yeah, from what I've heard, Sami Zayn's bloodline stuff has been fantastic. And from the bits I've seen, looks really good. Um, and I felt like... And just from everything I see as a wrestling fan, when you just go on wrestling Twitter or whatever, Sami Zayn is just booming he's had like the best year of his career in a really long time and i'm so happy for the guy sammy Zayn has always been one of my favorites i've loved the dude um i've always been very mad that he didn't hasn't won he didn't win a world uh, not even just a world championship he didn't win a championship in his first couple months to be and it was like he hit that ceiling of like if he's not fighting kevin owens sammy Zayn ain't doing anything uh but thankfully he turned heel teamed up with Kevin Owens and I'm like I like this team keep these two together these two need to be doing everything together uh he turned heel and then he became like the conspiracy guy where everyone's a conspiracy against them it helped him win the Intercontinental title which was good um but now he's been doing this bloodlight thing and now he's potentially in the running at like next year to win not to win the world title but to be in a world championship match against Roman Reigns which that's fantastic I'm so happy for Sami Zayn. So he is number four. Because I just I had to put him on. Number three. Chris Jericho. Number five was about that in-ring work. Number four was about the character. Chris Jericho is number three. It's about both. Chris Jericho, again, is that master of reinvention. He keeps reinventing himself time after time after time. He's always different. Anytime you say, Chris Jericho is boring me. Like, I don't like what Chris Jericho is doing. The thing is, that's probably the point. He And he probably knows that. Jericho probably sees that and knows that and goes, Okay, then I'm going to lean into this so that way they boo me more. And then it makes sense when I turn into my new character. Which is what happened. People were starting to turn on Chris Jericho as the babyface. I wasn't. I love Chris Jericho and anything he does. So I was like fine with Chris Jericho being a babyface. Um, people were starting to boo Chris Jericho as a babyface, especially when he was going up against Eddie Kingston. And Jericho just lent into it more and more and more, and then he turned heel, and it's like, oh, it all makes sense. And then when Chris Jericho turned heel, he became the wizard Chris Jericho, throwing fireballs in people's face. I died laughing, I loved them. Uh, this resulted in a the blood and guts match, the anarchy in the arena, two just fan freaking tastic matches. Uh, one of those we will see on another list. Ooh, whatever could it be? Um, and then he became Ring of Honor World Champion at AEW Grand Slam, beating Claudio Castagnoli, which I don't think anyone saw coming. I don't think anyone saw Chris Jericho winning the Ring of Honor World title. Like, at all. Um, but he won, and he just went, and he just started to have those bangers, man. Like, Bandito, Colt Cabana. Um, he had the amazing four-way at full gear. You know, like, Chris Jericho just started, like, 
it was the funny thing where it's like he tried to destroy Ring of Honor, but he was actually becoming a great champion for the brand and was building it back up. Which I found was it was a funny, ironic thing. Uh, and then he lost it to uh, Claudio at Final Battle, which, all right, you know, I knew as soon as he won it, I'm like, okay, he's holding this till the next Ring of Honor pay-per-view because that's going to be the story. Who can dethrone the Tyrant Chris Jericho? I loved uh, Chris Jericho this year. I usually love Chris Jericho pretty much every year, but this year was like a great year for him. And he, I don't, I'm not, I'm not one to talk about getting a shape, but Jericho lost a ton of weight and he looks like he's de-aged like by 10 years. What the hell happened, man? Number two, it's not really a shocker. It's MJF. MJF this year, he is the current world champion for AEW. He has cut amazing promos like William Regal, um, like against John Moxley, against CM Punk. Let's not forget he started the year in the Punk rivalry, and we had the uh, amazing MJF promo where he kind of turned face for like a week, and then he immediately turned heel again. Uh, the dog collar match, CM Punk. We had, um, I'm trying to remember, what was he doing heading into full gear? I mean, uh, all out. Oh, then we had the Wardlow storyline, of course, which had a bit of bumpy patches, but in the end, everything worked out the way it was supposed to. That he was gone for a bit. He returned at all out, uh, for with his, uh, where he won the casino at Battle Royale to face the world champion whenever he wanted. He cashed the chip in at full gear. He beat John Moxley. And then immediately turns on William Regal, uh, cementing himself as Uber Heel MJF again. And so far, he's had one title defense against Ricky Starks, which was very good. And he's setting up another one against Brian Danielson down the line. I love MJF. I've always loved MJF. Um, but I think this was a really, really good year for him. Like a very good year for him. You know, winning the world title does that for you. Even though there was rough patches of him not being on TV. Because of like uh, issues with Tony Khan, he still had a great year, and I still think it was deserving of being this high, because that's just MJF. That's just the power of MJF. And then number one, my favorite wrestler of the year. I don't think it's a shocker. It's John Moxley. This guy's carried AEW this year. Seriously, he put AEW on its back when it needed him the most. You know, we started the year with John. He was doing the thing with Brian Danielson, which led to the formation of the Blackpool Combat Club with Wheeler Yuta joining. Then um, he was involved in Anarchy in the Arena. And then he was involved in Blood and Guts. Then uh, we had to crown a new AEW champion because Punk got hurt. Mox won. He became a two-time champ. And he just ran with it. And was just a great champion. Punk came back. He dropped the belt to Punk. Then the brawl out situation happened. And we needed another champion. So Mox was like, okay, I'll just do it again. When the the, uh, the company needed him in a dark time, he was there to be that guide. To be holding that uh, that torch and be like, I'll, I'll, I'll do this. You know? Um, and he has postponed his vacation so many damn times to... To be here for AEW. So I hope when he and Hangman's uh, rematch happens and is over. John takes a break. The deserving break. And goes away. <laughs> you deserve it man. But he is. And he's put on great matches. Not just for being for the there for the company. He's put on great matches for the company. As well. You know against Chris Jericho. Brian Danielson. Wheeler Utah, MJF. Uh, Roosh like he's just had a great match you just look up any John Moxley match from this year and it was probably very good <laughs> and high likely it was a very good match uh, so because of everything John's done going above and beyond he is my number one wrestler of the year and that does it for this list we will we'll come back next year and see if any of these guys make it next year I hope they do um, so those are my top five wrestlers of the year. Let me know your top five wrestlers of the year and a little brief thing on why I'd love to know and I will see you all next time.